Everyone has his or her own individual favorite actors, and apparently there's a consensus of who are our favorite as a country. Between December 9th and December 14th of last year, 2,252 American adults were contacted by the Harris Poll and asked who their favorite actors are, survey says. Tom Hanks, of all people. Second was Johnny Depp. Third was Denzel Washington. Fourth and fifth were John Wayne and Harrison Ford. Hmm. I'm sure I'm not the only one who remembers Power Rangers. The Red Ranger was everyone's Halloween costume, the Pink Ranger was every guy's first crush, and the Silver Ranger was everyone's goal, because, let's be honest, nine times out of ten, they'd never beat the bad guy without him. But with that aside, the first part of the story is, this is the next victim to be made into a movie. Now that that's over with, they've already started on casting. The Rangers themselves are a few lesser-known actors from various roles, but they've signed a pretty sweet, villainous role. Elizabeth Banks will play Rita Repulsa, couldn't tell you who that is. But Banks is a pretty big name in the business, so for her to sign on for this actually kind of sort of gives me a little hope. No word on who's going to play the random giant floating head yet, but director Dean Israelite is helming the film and is to be expected to be released in March of next year. Dino Super Drive Saber! Ha! Dino Super Drive Charger! There are not enough movies with the Pope in them. There. Controversial opinion, but I said it. Anyway, to rectify this egregious Pope drought in Hollywood, Ambi Pictures is on the case. Don't get too excited. The Pope's playing himself in a family adventure about the Gospels that is being produced for Argentinian charities. We've actually obtained the first trailer for the movie. Let's take a look. <laughs> the winter is coming. He has the power to wipe out the entire human race, and if we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. The Academy may be getting a lot of backlash, but this past weekend, the Screen Actors Guild Awards took place and seemed to leave everyone pretty satisfied with the amount of diversity that took place not only in the nominations, but the winners as well. Idris Elba was the big winner of the night, walking away with an award for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Supporting Role and Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a TV Movie or Miniseries. His respective awards were for his roles in Beasts of No Nation and Luther. Usually the SAG Awards are a pretty good indicator for who will win the Oscar as well, but due to Elba being snubbed from a nomination, the Best Supporting Guy category is still pretty wide open. Hopefully the recognition from the Screen Actors Guild will help pave the way for less Academy whitewashing in the future. Uh you now have something that stands for you. You now have something that stands for you. That is your defense. That is your family's blood. Yes, sir. Victory! 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 Our top story tonight, Academy Award winning director Catherine Bigelow has been on a winning streak since her return from career hiatus with Best Picture winner The Hurt Locker in 2009. She followed that up with 2012's Zero Dark Thirty, which although it did not win Best Picture, might have been even better than The Hurt Locker. Since then, she's been fooling around with a few projects. Now it's been reported that Bigelow and acclaimed producer Megan Ellison are developing a project for Annapurna Pictures focused on the infamously hostile riots of 1967 in Detroit. The riots left 43 dead, 1,189 injured, 7,200 arrested, and 2,000 buildings destroyed. The film will begin shooting this summer, aiming for a 2017 release, the 50th anniversary of the riots. Quite frankly, I didn't even want to use you guys. With your dip and your Velcro and all your gear, I wanted to drop a bomb. But people didn't believe in this lead enough to drop a bomb. So they're using you guys as canaries 
and the theory that if Bin Laden isn't there, you can sneak away and no one will be the wiser. But Bin Laden is there, and you're gonna kill him for me.